Hello, grade five students. Mr. Waterman here with today's mathematics lesson. It is Monday, January 18th, 2021. Happy New Year to all of you. I hope you are doing safe and well. This is our first mathematics online lesson of the year. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to open up to my table of contents. The last lesson we had, we multiplied whole numbers and decimals. Well, today we're going to multiply fractions. And if you have your notebooks and are able to take notes with me, that is fine. If not, if you have your own notebook paper, please feel free to take notes on that as well. And I'm going to be working on page number eight today because the last lesson was quite long and it took me two pages, okay? So I go to page number eight and I'm going to write my title at the top. Multiply fractions. There we go. All right. Now, the first thing I'm going to write is my objective. It's very important because this tells us what we are going to study. The objective is to find the product. of two fractions. And I like multiplying fractions very much because I think it's easy, really easy. It takes less time too, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a basic example. I'm going to show you two ways that you can multiply fractions. You can choose whichever way you want to find the answers, it's completely up to you, okay? So let's look at this example here. And I'm going to say different ways to find five sixths of three-fourths, okay? Way one, because the book always shows us to do different ways. You can multiply first then Simplify. Okay, I'm going to show you exactly what that means. Let's do it in steps. So we have step one. You want to multiply the numerators. So remember the numerators that's the top number of the fraction, right? Multiply the numerators, and then you're going to multiply the denominators. That's the bottom number of the fraction, right? Okay. So here's the example again. I'll write them a little bigger. Five sixths times three fourths. Okay? You just go right across, multiply the numerators, five times three, and then the denominators, six times four. Five times three, that gives us 15. And six times four gives us 
24. Okay, so we have 15 24ths as our answer. Now we can make that smaller. We can simplify it, right? So we need to find numbers that go into 15 and 24. Well, I know that number is going to be 3. So I'm going to now divide 15 divided by 3 and 24 divided by 3. And that is going to give me 5 eighths as an answer when I simplify it. Okay? That's way one. This is the way that I always use. And I find it to be the easiest. And I think most students like this way as well. If you really love mathematics, like I do, then you can move on to way number two. And I know most of you will love this. Way two. You can simplify first then multiply. Now most of you are saying, why would I want to do that, Mr. Waterman? Isn't it easier to just do it way one? Well, you tell me. Because way two, you have an extra step. Let's have a look. Oh, I should label this step two. I'll go back and do that after. Step two, simplify the product if necessary, which is what I did here, okay? Continuing on, let's go to step one, rewrite using factors. So when I do that, I have five six times three fourths, okay, but I'm going to do it this way. Five times three, let me turn that off so we don't, we're not interrupted with any more noises. Over, what are my factors for six? Well, two and three. So two times three times four, okay? Then we go to step two. Divide. By common factors. Five sixths times three fourths. So we go back to what I did before. Five times three over two times three times four. Now in English, we also call this cross canceling. So I have a three in the numerator and I have a three in the denominator. So those are gonna cancel out. That's going to give me one. One on the top and one on the bottom. So now, you get to go to step three. Isn't this so much more fun than way number one? What do you think? I can hear many of you saying, um, no. All right, so now I have five times one over one times two times four, and that's going to give me five over eight as an answer. 
two ways. Okay. So now I'm going to need another page again. Now I'm going to show you how to multiply a fraction and whole number. Let's use the example one fifth times four. Okay, well, we can't leave the four by itself. Whenever we have a whole number, we need to put that whole number over one. One fifth times four over one. That's going to give me 1 times 4 over 5 times 1, and that's going to give me 4 fifths. Nice and easy. Okay? So you all should have no problems. As you are looking at this video, when you're done with the video and you click on the PDF file, you'll have exactly what I have done on these two pages in the textbook because I've attached those activities and I've also attached a page out of your practice book and a page out of your homework book because I know a lot of you don't have your homework books at home, especially if you're in five one. Okay? Now... Table of contents, we're on page number two here. So we left off multiplying decimals. Now we're going to multiply fractions. That's on page 77. Okay. Go all the way. And here we go. Multiply fractions on page 77. So it's pretty straightforward. You just go through, okay, and you multiply, and then just make sure that your answers are in simplest form, please, okay? Then at the bottom, you have two word problems as well. So just doing a couple together. Number one, you have one-fifth times two-fifths. Should be straightforward. That's going to give you two over twenty-five. Now you can't make that any smaller. Okay. Then if you do number two, two thirds times one fourth. That's going to give us two twelfths. I can simplify that. Divide the numerator and denominator by two, and that's gonna give me one six as my answer, okay? Remember what I said to do for a fraction and a whole number? One tenth times two, that's going to give us one tenth times two over one, and that's going to give me two tenths I can simplify, divide the numerator and denominator both by two. That's going to give me one-fifth. That's my answer, okay? Just work through all the problems. It's nice and easy, pretty straightforward, okay? Now, your homework book, you're going to have similar activities. And give me a second to get to the page. Here we go. Page 77 in your homework book. 
multiply fractions. Now what I love about the homework book is it shows you examples at the top, just in case you have forgotten, okay? So here it says different ways to find two-thirds of six-eighths. This is similar to what I did in my notebook just a few minutes ago. So it reminds you for way one, you multiply, then you simplify, right? So two thirds times six eighths, that gives us multiplying the numerators, two times six gives you 12. Multiply the denominators, three times eight gives us 24. You can simplify that. Divide the numerator and the denominator both by 12, and that will give you one half as an answer. You can go to way number two, simplify first, then multiply. So we have two times six over three times two times four. Okay, well, we do our factors. Then you cross cancel. Two into two, one and one, and then you can divide three into six. That gives us a one, that gives us a two at the top. Do your multiplication. One times two is two. One times one times four is four. Two fourths can be simplified into one half. And there you have it, okay? Multiply, write your answers again in simplest form. Let's look at a few examples. One, six times two thirds. That's going to give me two over 18. I can simplify that, divide it by two, divide it by two. That gives me one ninth, okay? And remember, when you have a whole number, put the whole number over one, one eighth times three over one, that's going to give me three eighths. And I cannot make that any smaller, okay? Show your work, that's all. If you all have any questions, please just email Mr. Waterman at any time. Take your time and watch the videos very carefully, okay? Everyone stay safe and well. I know that this is not an ideal situation with online classes, but this is how things have to be. I appreciate all of your hard work, even though we haven't seen each other for a very long time. Study hard, have a great day studying, and hopefully we will see each other again very soon. Take care, and bye-bye for now.